What is up guys, it's Big L tuning in on this fantastic Monday. Obviously a weekend full of MMA action, EFC, UFC and uh, a couple of bits and bobs in between. Uh, I want to get into a lot but I, I'm guessing that the controversy of the title fight from EFC 92 is going to be the main staple. Um, bit, of a, bit of a fight hangover on a Monday after all that's happened and all the fights that have happened um, but yeah obviously obviously EFC 92 the main event title fight between Luke Michael and Papanga Trezor was uh, drowned in controversy and um, yeah sadly the, the the worst part about these controversial things is that it kind of like washes everything else that happened over the weekend to some degree especially in the EFC um, so just quickly there were some great performances great standout performances in the EFC nice to see guys like JP Kruger back uh, Conrad Siabi getting a good win over a tough opponent uh, in Wade Henderson Cameron Simon continuing the momentum and, and building up that hype to a real prospect and, and starting to get closer to the title fight um, I would imagine he's going to get a very stiff challenge next a um, couple of standouts in the prelims and yeah it, it was a pretty good card it ran pretty well um, nice to have the EFC back. Unfortunately, the main event shrouded in controversy, like I said. Um, I want to get into what I saw and what I felt and what I think about the situation. Um, I know there's people that are going to say uh, I'm biased, I'm uneducated, I'm whatever else, and that's all okay. Um, but there are people out there I would assume that would want to hear my opinion and that's why I'm here um, so before I say anything just please bear in mind that this is my interpretation of what happened my interpretation and understanding of the rules and my opinion on the matter it's not to say that what I say is 100% correct um, and it's not 100% wrong it's an opinion it's my interpretation uh, as a student of the sport, as somebody who's who's been studying the sport for a long time, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not the best and there's people that are way smarter than me that might have a different opinion or a better opinion, but this is just mine. Um, so I think that's very important. <clears throat> I'm not saying my interpretation is 100% correct, it's just my interpretation. The first point that, that I feel is very important, and I said this a bit on Instagram, there is no point in giving hate to Luke Michael. Luke Michael did nothing wrong. Luke Michael did exceptionally well. He showed grit, he showed heart, and he showed determination, and he found a way to win that title. That is very important. He also was in a, in a strange situation where he thought the fight was over. He, in his mind, he had to go through all of that quick mental flash and physical flash of losing another title fight and then had to reset and get back into the fight and find a way to win. That shows incredible amount of heart. So there's no point we should be celebrating the prowess of Luke Michael. That is very important. There's no point in saying Luke is this, Luke is that, Luke did nothing wrong. Luke won a title. Okay, that's the first point. He also had to go and live through that moment. And I think that's very important. When we look at Pupanga Trezor, and I'm, I'm going to jump into a video, I'm going to try and slow it down and break it down for you guys to explain exactly what I saw and what a lot of people saw, and this is important, a lot of people. I know people were, obviously, I, I'm, I'm quite outspoken, so, so I take a lot of that, but if there was nothing controversial, there wouldn't be an outcry. If it was clear cut, there would be no outcry, and the mass of outcry all agrees that Referee Ferdinand Besson made a massive mistake, a massive mistake. We can argue about how he interpreted the rules and how he applied that interpretation and that's fine but I don't think many people can agree that he didn't make a mistake. He clearly, clearly made a mistake and in my mind he made a few mistakes, more than one. Why and how he did those? is entirely up to your own interpretation. I have my own thoughts on it, um, but I think it's going to be very hard for people to say that he never made a mistake 
or what he did was 100% correct. I, th I think that that's very hard to say. Um, and I'm going to explain why. On Papunga Trezor, if we go through that moment, and like I said, I'm, I'm going to put up a video that hopefully explains a little bit more. Both of these guys, in a insanely hard sport, insanely, insanely hard sport, these guys have been training since last year getting ready for this fight. This fight was announced very early. So they've been physically getting prepared. They've been mentally getting prepared. They've financially been getting prepared. They have put their lives on in the ringer. They have been training. They have been focusing. They have been preparing themselves ready for a world title fight. This is massively important to remember. In one of the hardest sports, or one of the hardest things you can do in the world, these are the 1% people of the world that have to prepare themselves for these situations. You get into a fight, you've done everything, your teams have done everything on both sides. Luke, Michael, Papanga, Trezor. Like I said in the build-up, I think we know exactly what Luke is going to do, and that's what he did. Shot an early takedown, it got stuffed, it got... He, uh, Papanga uh, sprawled, they had a bit of a scramble in exchange, got back up to the feet, he shot again immediately after a wild punch from Pupanga, and we were back on the ground. Papanga found an underhook, turned it over, and eventually found himself in a half guard position. Now, once Pupanga lands in that half guard position, he senses an opening. And not just an opening, he senses a moment in that small fraction of time adrenaline crowds everything that's happening in that small moment he finds an opening where he feels he can finish that fight does he get a bit reckless i think so but he finds that opening in it, it is a fight at the end of the day in that situation he offloads as most fighters will do at this point in my mind if that fighter that is trying to finish that fight gets a little bit reckless, and we can see countless examples of this, countless examples, even in the UFC that happened yesterday morning, you will find examples of shots going astray in the moment. The referee will issue a verbal warning, and that verbal warning, and someone asked me, are you sure there was no verbal warning? I didn't hear it. I didn't see it. I don't think anybody, because I haven't seen anybody say, look, here's the verbal warning. Nobody's come out and said, listen, you can hear him give a warning. I don't think that happens. And we've seen this countless times. Multiple verbal warnings, not even just one. Multiple verbal warnings issued by a referee. Watch the back of the head. Watch the shots to the spine or whatever else. Watch your shots. Watch the back of the head. Clear cut instruction from the referee especially especially in a finishing sequence this is the frustration for me why did referee Ferdi Besson not issue a warning a clear cut warning watch the back of the head we see it all the time it happens all the time in MMA and the reaction is for a referee to give a warning that's the first part the second part is to remember a finishing sequence. Trezor had seen a moment he was trying to close out the fight. There were shots landing, there were shots landing illegally, and there were shots landing unanswered. That's what I saw. I didn't see illegal shots at first, if I'm honest, but I went back and slowly watched and rewatched and rewatched again and came to the conclusion there were definitely some illegal shots. I counted maybe three. Nothing in my mind, nothing overly drastic that would even justify a point deduction. That's in my mind. I've, you've seen way worse, way worse, and you've seen multiple warnings go. In the EFC, in the UFC, in every organization in the world, you've seen multiple warnings given long before a point. Long, long, long before a point. Then it comes down to the next thing. If referee Ferdinand Besson was so decisive that those shots were so illegal to deduct a point surely he should be then saying that there was intent malicious intent thrown behind those shots i don't think anybody can justify illegal intent in that moment i just don't see it I, can you honestly say pupanga trezor intentionally landed illegal strikes in that moment 
I, I, I can't say that. And if you're saying that as a referee, that you felt so strongly <clears throat> that those shots were illegal in that finishing sequence, you stopped the fight to deduct a point. In my mind, that should be, as a referee, you should be backing yourself and saying, DQ. Those were intentionally illegal strikes. DQ. End of the fight. Sorry, my dog. So, that's, that's, the, that's the part. It's indecisive refing. If you want to be, that's me giving Fernand Pisson the benefit of the doubt. Indecisive. I actually don't even, my, my honest thought is that that is a complete hash, what he did. Okay? So, then let's move on. Let's all agree that there were, there were a couple of illegal strikes in there with no intent. Or if you want to be uh, as objective as possible, let's even say he had intent. The next motion from the referee is to step in, lift Pupanga Trezor off Luke Michael in a finishing sequence. And he does this. One, two, and possibly even a third. We're going to check properly. Pupanga Trezor turns his back to celebrate, and once he's turned his back, gives a timeout. That is incorrect, and I think anybody who's watching this who's a referee or judge knows it's like sign language in there. If you do this, it means the fight is over. This is timeout. This is over. It's clear cut. If you wave your hands like this, the fight is over. This is the biggest contention of the whole sequence. The commentators thought the fight was over, the crowd thought the fight was over, and 99% of the people watching that fight thought the fight was over. I turned around saying that Trezor just won. And I'm sure most of you did. If you're being 100% honest with yourself, you thought the fight was over. Luke Michael thought the fight was over. That's what I believe. He didn't contest. That's the next. Watch his body language. Look at the images. You can see images of Pupanga uh, Trezor celebrating. Luke Michael almost conceded that he had already lost. He wasn't contending. He didn't put his hands up. He didn't look at the referee claiming an early stoppage in his mind also. I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Luke will advise different. I believe and it looked that he felt the fight was also over. This from a referee signals the fight is over. TKO, it's done. Then changes his mind to a, to a timeout. Okay? What happens from there is for me just as disturbing. <clears throat> Pupanga goes off. Why does Ferdi Basson not immediately, immediately stop the celebration, get Pupanga Trezor's attention, and immediately make him aware that the fight is not over it is a time out to deduct a point this is a massive thing i have maybe i'm um, maybe there are examples out, out there i have personally can't maybe i can't remember but i've never seen a referee stop a moment like that to deduct a point if it was an illegal knee to the head a illegal head kick on a grounded opponent or those kind of things we're not arguing we understand straight up illegal dq we move on with our lives i cannot remember a fight a single fight and i've watched millions of fights i'm sure you watching this have watched millions of fights have ever seen a referee stop a fight for those kind of determined illegal shots to deduct a point like that wave it off then change your mind say no time out I'm deducting a point. I can't ever remember an example of that. Ever. Maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a high probability that I'm wrong with that. But I just can't remember it. Then he doesn't stop Pupanga Trezor celebrations. That is so confusing to me. Why would he not stop that? It carries on. He has multiple opportunities to make the fighter aware. He still directs him back to his corner. Why does he not make him aware in that moment, long before that moment in fact, that it's a time out, you have not won, stop celebrating, we are going again, we are resetting and we are going. That is so frustrating to me. Okay, let's jump into the video to hopefully make more sense of this. 
Okay, so like I said, I've got the video here I want to jump into. Um, let me just get it ready. I've tried to slow it down so, so it makes more sense. Um, I just want to get to that finishing sequence that I call, uh, this is it here. Okay, so I was obviously not 100% sold on the legal shots, but did go back and review and watch. There were obviously legal shots. Let's see if we can see them. That's the first one, that's the left hand. Um, that's venturing to the back of the head. The next one, I think, obviously it's gonna be hard to see guys. This is not uh, the world's most insane technology. I'm just really slowing the video down. That one you can kind of see landing on the hand. Um, that one's fine, the left hand, the right hand coming is illegal. That's quite clearly to the back of the head. That one's to the top of the head. There's a right hand to the body there, which we can't see the angle, but looking at that positioning, looking like that's landing in the ribs. The left hand comes, you can see that kind of skims off the top of the head. And then the double hammer fists, we can't really see. I think the left hand misses and the right hand is connecting. You can see Luke's left hand coming up there um, defensively. And then let's see the next one. That left hand is landing on the back of the head and that double hammer fist throwing there. So that's three, four maybe illegal shots. And then the rest are kind of all clear to the body that's catching on the hand, right hand, left hand to the head again, another left hand. That last left hand may be a bit dubious. Um, it's not really clear cut. And then this left hand is fine. This is the moment where it gets really interesting. So, like I said, I haven't seen or heard any warning. Um, <clears throat> now, Fernand Besson is stepping in. Look at the body language. He comes in, steps in, covers up, pushes Trezor off. Let's see, I might have slowed it down a little bit too much. Waves the fight off, clearly. Waving the fight off waving the fight off. This image here is the one I'm talking about. So we've seen two waves waving the fight off. Trezor is already celebrating, hands are up, back is turned, now he calls a timeout. I don't know where he's looking to officials or whatever it is, now he's calling a timeout. Trezor is celebrating. Clearly, clearly waving off the fight. Why in this moment right here, and this carries on for some time, why is Fernand Besson not stopping this celebration? He allows it to continue. If he honestly believes that this is just a timeout, he should be stopping this celebration immediately, calling the fighter back and telling him he has to continue. Now, as Trezor turns, I think they, they meet each other and he ushers him to his corner. You can see he's trying to give it a timeout, doesn't say anything. Pupanga is looking at, La at Luke Michael that he's just won. Luke Michael looks also just as confused, doesn't really understand what's going on. Still hasn't told him that he's going to have to continue. Walks him to his corner and at this point, uh, Fernand Besson tries to tap him on the back. But I mean, this could be anybody tapping him on the back in my mind. Because you can see shortly after this, people are in there lifting him up. No control, here he goes. He gets lifted up, still hasn't been told that he needs to stay in the fight. This is insanity to me. If we give the referee all the benefit of the doubt, why has he not stopped this? How has this person been let into the cage as well? How are they not stopping the celebration and made the fighter aware that he has to continue fighting? Even giving all of the benefit of the doubt, how is this happening? This is so confusing to me. You <clears throat> And Ferdinand Besson just gets conceded. You can see him in the back there, walking over to talk to somebody. Um, I don't know, maybe it's Graham. Someone was saying that he went over to Graham. I'm not too sure who he's going over to talk to. Um, no, I, that's definitely not Graham. I don't know who he's talking to. Um, why is this being allowed to carry on? How is this being allowed to happen? This is a complete failure. A complete failure. And now you can see the visual. This is what I wanted to show you. Now you've got Ferdinand Besson who's just conceded. 
He's conceded he's lost control. They're celebrating. He's waved off the fight, then called time out, and, and it's just an absolute, absolute dog show in my mind from here. So, <clears throat> Papanga Trezor, in his mind, has just become the EFC middleweight champion of the world. He's traveled from the DRC. He's emotionally been invested in this journey, just like Luke Michael. He has just become the champion of the world. The weeks and weeks of build up training physically mentally the sacrifices all of that has just been justified in this moment that the referee has waved off the adrenaline is surging excitement is surging you're celebrating the referee is watching you celebrate to then only be told to carry on the fight and again, I'll say this credit to Luke because he had to go through that moment too and found a way to win. Pupanga had nothing left. He gassed, he was tired. He had already celebrated becoming the world champion and then has to go back to fight. There's, it's going to be so hard for anybody to say to me that that was the right call from the referee. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how you can say that. Maybe there's someone who knows more than me that, that can explain that to us. I hope so. I hope someone with, a better, with way more knowledge can come out and try and explain this. What happens from here is the next question. Instant rematch. Do you think it's just that Papanga Trezor isn't walking away with the title? That's a big question. Do you think the referee shifted momentum in a fight ending sequence that cost Pupanga Trestle a world title? That is the question. Do you think Ferdinand Besson justly made the right call is the next question. Do you think stopping that fight finishing sequence with zero warnings in my mind, no warnings and then wave off your hands was the right thing to do. That is the questions we all have to ask ourselves. The bigger problem I have with Mr. Besson is that you will always see him in a main event. He is determined to keep himself in the spotlight. If you are the technical director or whatever other uh, titles he holds from MMASA and AMF, and you put yourself in the spotlight, that means you are the golden standard and we will hold you to a golden standard. There are implications, both financial, physical, emotional, and way beyond most of us can imagine as fighters, implications on how a referee responds and reacts. And there are mass implications on what Ferdinand Besson has done here. Massive implications on both individuals. One has a title, Celebrate, he did his job. Massive credit to him. But nobody will ever let him forget the controversy of that fight. Compliments of the referee. Luke Michael did his job. Pupanga Trezor did his job. In my mind, Ferdinand Besson failed his job. By putting himself constantly, constantly in a main event, constantly, there's many other refs who could handle those situations. He puts himself in that situation time and time and time again. He requires that spotlight. It means in his mind, he is the South African golden standard and we will hold him accountable to that. Referees make mistakes, of course they do. The problem that I have is that we are seeing too many mistakes from our judges, from our referees, and especially Mr. Besson, who has been in my mind, slipping of late. He's getting a little bit slower, he's getting a little bit more indecisive, and in my mind, the golden standard of referee would notice that, and he would say, Bobby, Vickers, Brad Block, whoever else, you've been on a good run, I think you should handle this high pressure main event. That's what I think, that's what I would do, I would be honest with myself and say, perhaps I'm getting a little bit slower or perhaps I need some time to reevaluate. Let's also bear in mind, if you want to be a referee, a qualified referee 
in this sport in South Africa, Ferdinand Basson is the person you have to go through. You have to pay your fees. You have to be educated by him uh, through AMAF. He represents the golden standard in South Africa and AMAF. Can he make mistakes? Yes, he can. 100% human being. I get that. But this is a dire, dire mistake in my mind. With immense consequences on both individuals, especially on Pupanga Trezor. Especially. And he 100% has a claim for being robbed of a title. Barring the actions, this means the fight is over. It is over. In a fight finishing sequence, if you lift off the person attacking without warning and you do this, the fight is over. I don't think we need to be too smart to figure that one out. That's my take on it. Like I said, it's my take. Maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I'm not. I just feel so passionate about athletes being even robbed is a bit of a strong word but being denied the right to the right referee that frustrates me especially when you insist insist on being in every single main event it means you are putting yourself in charge it means you are making yourself the guy you want to be the guy then we are going to judge you as the guy. That's how it works. If you put yourself front and center there, every single main event, we will hold it accountable. That's how it goes. You are saying, by Ferdinand Besson making sure that he is in every single main event at the EFC, it means he is the golden standard. That's what we will hold him to. I honestly believe <clears throat> that there is room in, if there was such a thing as an independent commission in this country, which I don't feel there is, that's my personal feeling, that that should be overturned to a no contest. The referee completely swung the momentum in a fight finishing sequence and changed the outcome of that fight. He signaled the fight was over and that one person had just become a world champion. That is massively important to bear in mind. That's my take on it, guys. Uh, this is probably the last I'm going to say because it, it gets a bit crazy. Um, that's my thoughts. That's my feelings. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, good luck to both guys, Luke Michael and Papanga Trezor, whatever, whatever happens. I guess the rematch is obviously what comes next, hopefully, and we just squash this and put it to bed. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much for tuning in. We'll chat to you soon. Peace.